I welcome all of you to the class. And today's class will continue from the previous lecture on the applications of the friction devices. And the first friction device we discussed last time was the screw jack. So we'll continue from our analysis on the working of the screw jack. And about screw jack, today we will be talking about the efficiency of a screw jack for raising a load. So today's topic is efficiency of a screw jack for raising a load. Now, before we understand understand what do we mean by the efficiency and how we define the efficiency. Now, first of all, we define the ideal effort, what we call as the P ideal. We know P is the load that we apply at the end of the handle, at the end of the lever for lifting the load. Okay. So, but we define here P ideal. P ideal is known as an ideal effort. Okay. This is known as the ideal effort ideal effort at the end of the handle or lever at the end of the handle ideal effort at the end of the handle of the screw jack of the of the screw jack to lift the load To lift the load. So first of all, we need to define and load was W. Okay. First of all, we need to define what do you mean by the ideal effort? Okay. Now P ideal is the effort or the force that we require to lift the load W. Okay. When the friction acting on the in between the jack and the nut is equal to zero. Okay. And we know P for in order to define the P ideal, we will write P ideal is equal D by 2L W tan of alpha plus phi, where our, because we know mu is equal to zero, which implies tan of phi angle of repose is also equal zero fine so when we define p ideal we define p ideal as the effort at the end of the handle of the screw jack to lift the load w when the coefficient of friction is zero fine so by this formula this becomes d by 2l into w into tan of alpha plus tan of phi divided by one minus tan of alpha into tan of phi. Since P ideal is defined when tan phi is equal to zero, therefore, which becomes uh, D W by 2L into tan of alpha. This is what we call as an ideal effort. So for us, P ideal, the ideal effort is equal DW, the mean diameter, multiplied by the weight, divided by two times the length of the screw length of the lever into tan of alpha okay the tan of the wedge angle or the helix angle what we call that okay so this is how we define uh, the p ideal now after defining the p ideal we define what's known as the efficiency of the screw jack okay so as far as the efficiency of the screw jack is concerned we write it by nita efficiency of the screw screw jack is defined as the ideal effort ideal effort divided by the actual effort divided by the actual effort ideal effort divided by the actual effort is known as the efficiency okay that is p ideal divided by p okay that is equal d by 2l into w tan of alpha as we just derived it divided by p and we know p is equal d by 2l into w tan of alpha plus phi fine 
that becomes equal tan of alpha divided by tan of alpha plus phi. Okay. Now look, if you analyze the equation of efficiency, from here we can at least infer that the equation uh, from the equation of efficiency of the screw jack, we can infer that the efficiency is independent of the weight lifted or effort applied, but it depends upon the helix angle and the friction angle. This is something important that the efficiency of a screw jack, we can write it in a more mathematical form that efficiency of a screw jack is a function of the helix angle and the friction angle. And efficiency of the screw jack is not a function of, it's independent of, it's independent of the weight to be lifted, it's independent of the lever arm, it's independent of the main, uh, mean diameter, okay? Uh, so the efficiency is the function of alpha and phi only. That is the beauty of, of it, okay? So we can still modify this equation. We can write this as sine of alpha by cos of alpha divided by sine of alpha plus phi divided by cos of alpha plus phi. Fine, that becomes equal sine of alpha multiplied by cos of alpha plus phi divided by cos of alpha into uh, cos of alpha into sine of alpha plus phi, okay? Fine. So this is the value of, this is the efficiency of the screw jack, okay? If we subtract, uh, subtracting, each side of the equation, subtracting each side of the equation from one, okay? Subtracting each side of this equation, subtracting each side of equation from one, from one, okay? That means on the, uh, we have to subtract the left side and the right-hand side from one. So our left-hand side will become one minus neta and our right-hand side will become one minus subtraction of this entire term, okay? So let me do one more here. So it will be, the expression will become one minus neta is equal one minus sine alpha, one minus sine alpha into cos of alpha plus phi divided by cos alpha into sine of alpha plus phi, fine. That becomes equal, one minus neta becomes cos of alpha multiplied by sine of alpha plus phi minus sine alpha into cos of alpha plus phi, okay? whole divided by cos of alpha multiplied by sine of alpha plus phi, fine. So this is, this entire equation can be written as cos A sine B minus sine A cos B. So we can write this as one minus neta can be written as sine of A alpha plus phi it will be sine of A minus B, okay, divided by cos of alpha into sine of alpha plus phi. And that becomes, that will be sine of phi divided by uh, sine of phi divided by cos alpha multiplied by sine of alpha plus phi multiplied by sine of alpha plus phi. Okay, that is one minus neta. This is what we can write. We can further do one thing if we multiply and divide both sides, uh, the numerator and the denominator by two. Therefore, this becomes two sine phi 
divided by this can be written as this is two times cos uh, this this entire equation can therefore be written as sine of uh, sine of let me uh, okay sine of uh, alpha plus phi plus alpha plus sine of alpha plus phi sine of alpha plus phi minus alpha okay so from here what we can infer is here we have here we have used two times cos of alpha into sine alpha is equal that is uh, two times cos a sine b is equal sine of a plus b plus sine of a minus b this formula we have used in the denominator fine so ultimately this entire equation can therefore be summed up as one minus neta is equal two times sine phi divided by sine of two alpha plus phi plus sine phi okay now let's talk when the efficiency will be maximum efficiency will be maximum when the term if the term one minus neta is minimal okay that is efficiency is maximum neta is maximum when one minus neta will be minimum okay so when my one when neta is maximum one minus neta will automatically be minimum okay now the term one minus neta will be minimum one minus neta will be minimum when the denominator of this expression will be maximum okay so we are doing that for neta to be maximum one minus neta will be minimum one minus neta will be minimum when the denominator on the right hand side will be maximum okay that is when sine of 2 alpha plus phi plus sine phi will be maximum okay now we know as far as phi is concerned phi is constant okay for a given wedge or for a given inclined shape phi is constant coefficient of friction okay now uh, it means when we say this sine phi will also be constant now we only have sine of 2 alpha plus phi okay now it means this entire expression is maximum when sine of 2 alpha plus phi is maximum when sine of 2 alpha plus phi is maximum and we know the maximum value of the sine angle is when angle is 90 that is when 2 alpha plus phi is equal 90 okay that is when 2 alpha is equal 90 degree minus phi okay then when alpha is equal 45 degree minus phi by 2 this is a very important relationship between alpha and phi okay therefore we substitute the value of alpha to be 45 minus phi by 2 back in this equation and obtain the maximum value of the efficiency fine that is we had just obtained that efficiency is equal tan of alpha divided by tan of alpha plus phi now we know when efficiency will be maximum then the value of alpha will be 40 minus phi by 2. Therefore, we can write the maximum efficiency, neta max, is equal tan of alpha. Alpha is equal 45 minus phi by 2 divided by tan of alpha plus phi. That is tan of 45 minus phi by 2 plus phi that will be equal tan of 45 minus phi by 2 divided by tan of 
45 plus 5 by 2. Okay, that can be written as tan of A minus tan of B divided by 1 plus tan A tan B and divided by this one that will be tan A plus tan B divided by 1 minus tan A into tan B. Okay. So that will finally become that will be tan 45 is 1. It is 1 minus tan 5 by 2 divided by 1 plus tan 5 by 2 divided by 1 plus tan 5 by 2 divided by 1 minus tan 5 by 2. So that will be equal 1 minus tan 5 by 2 whole square divided by 1 plus tan 5 by 2 whole square. That will be the maximum efficiency. Fine. We can further modify this equation as neta max. Neta max is equal 1 minus, this can be written as sine 5 by 2 by cos of 5 by 2 square divided by 1 plus sine 5 by 2 by cos of 5 by 2 whole square. That will come equal cos of 5 by 2 minus sine 5 by 2 whole square divided by cos 5 by 2 plus sine 5 by 2 whole square. So as we, is A minus B whole square, this is A plus B whole square. So as we open it up, we get it as one minus, because it will be cos square five by two plus sine square five by two, that is one. That will be minus two, that is two times sine five by two and cos five by two. Similarly, in the denominator, we will be also having one plus two, sine of 5 by 2 multiplied by cos 5 by 2. Okay. This is 2 sine theta cos theta. It will be 1 minus sine phi divided by 1 plus sine phi. Okay. So this is the maximum efficiency. So maximum efficiency is equal to 1 minus sine phi divided by 1 plus sine phi. This is apart from this efficiency, we also define the velocity ratio. That is something important to define here. The velocity ratio in a screw jack is defined as I will it's defined as the ratio of the distance. I will write it's defined as the ratio of distance moved by the effort distance moon by the effort divided by distance moved by the load distance moved by the load okay or we also say it's defined as a ratio of the distance. It's defined as the distance. It's defined as the ratio of the distance moved by the effort to the distance moved by the load. Okay. So it's also distance moved by the effort is okay. Sometimes we represent that by Y and distance 
moved by the load is x okay we'll do it in numerical portion in 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 a, in a, in, a, in a good detail and the very important term we also have is known as a mechanical advantage what is a mechanical advantage mechanical advantage is something important it's defined as the ratio of load lifted lifted to the effort applied okay so mechanical advantage is defined as load lifted it's defined as the ratio of load lifted to that of effort applied effort applied okay so it means mechanical advantage should be uh, greater than one why because the load lifted should be more as compared to the effort applied effort applied should be small and load lifted should be more load lifted was w and effort applied was p okay so this is how we represent this mechanical advantage okay sometimes the efficiency is also written in terms of uh, this uh, efficiency is also written in terms of the mechanical advantage we write efficiency is equal to mechanical advantage divided by the velocity ratio okay this is also written as because we know efficiency is equal to output by input efficiency is equal to output by input that is equal uh, output is w work multiplied by the distance that is x for example input is p the effort and the distance is say for example y okay so it is w by p divided by y by x okay so this w by p is your mechanical advantage and this y by x is your velocity ratio so this is how we also define this mechanical advantage velocity ratio and the efficiency we'll continue from here in the next class thank you very much